Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate for the double angle of sine, cosine, and tangent when given the value here and a constraint of, um, or when given an equation as well as given when, where a constraint of where theta has to lie. So the first important thing is, you know, my previous video I showed you how to evaluate for the double angle when given a right triangle and given the values of the right triangle. Well, here, we're given what sine of theta equals, uh, and we're given a constraint, but we don't know where, what the rest of the values are for the triangle. So first thing is we need to identify how to write a triangle in quadrant two. Now, I'm going to write the triangle in there. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll put it over to the right, because then I, um, as I keep on moving on, I'm going to have to keep on erasing this, because this is going to be really tight. I'm going to try to do my best. Hopefully, I don't draw right down too small for you. Um, but I'm going to try to fit double angle for sine, cosine, and tangent all in the same one. Wish me luck. All right, so let's actually even draw some lines here so I can try to fit everything in. OK, so first thing is when you're dealing with constraints, we have four quadrants, right? I guess I should just do all this outside. OK, so our, quadrant says, or our constraint says our angle has to be in quadrant two. Now, remember, when creating a um, triangle, that angle has to be a central angle. That means it's going to have to come up here. And it has to create a right angle, so it's going to create a right angle with the x-axis. So there's going to be our theta. Then it says the sine is 15. Oh, in quadrant 2. What am I doing? That's quadrant 3. <laughs> OK. So it's going to look something like this. Remember, this always is going to be your angle theta, which is going to be a central angle. That's going to be a right triangle. Okay. So we know that this is going to be 15 because it's opposite over hypotenuse. Now, basically, what we need to do is determine, well, what is going to be my um, adjacent side? Now, you could either, um, we look at this, so we could always do you know, 15 squared plus, let's call that x, plus x squared equals 17 squared. Use the Pythagorean theorem to go ahead and solve. And that becomes, what, 2, 289? So this is 225 plus x squared equals 289. Subtract 225, subtract 225. x squared equals 64, square root, square root. x equals plus or minus 8. Well, so we have plus or minus 8. But if you look at this in the second quadrant, we know that this has to be a negative 8, right? So x has to equal negative 8. So now we can evaluate. So now that we know what our triangle looks like, now it's just like the previous video I made. Now we just evaluate for sine, cosine, and tangent for the double angle. So the first one I'm going to do um, is going to be the sine of 2 theta. So the sine of 2 theta is going to be 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. So that's going to be 2 times 15. 15 over 17, which, we are, which they tell us in the problem. And then cosine is going to be negative 8 over 17. Now remember, you can rewrite the 2 as like 2 over 1. So therefore, I don't know these all on top of my head, and I don't really want to do all the math here. So I'm just going to do 15 times 8 times 2. So the heck? Oh. So it's going to be a negative 240. So that's going to be negative 240 divided by 289. Let me just double check. Yeah, OK. Um, 15 times 8 times 2, 240. Very good. So let's go over to cosine of 2 theta. And the formula I'm going to use for cosine of 2 theta is going to be cosine squared minus sine squared. So it's going to be cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And once I write these down the first time, I'm not going to have to keep on writing them down. I'll hopefully have more room um, in the next problems. So therefore, uh, let's see here. So therefore, cosine of theta, which we already showed here, is negative 8 over 17 squared minus sine of theta, which is 15 over 17 squared. So therefore, uh, negative 8 squared is going to be 64 over 289 minus 225 over um, 289. And 64, that is going to be 80, 61. 
161. Very good. So therefore, that's going to be 161, negative 161 over 289. And as, I'm, as I figured, I'm already going to be running out of space for tangent. Um, but that's perfectly OK. So let's go ahead and do tangent. Um, but actually, I really don't need this information over here anymore, right? So I can kind of move over and then take it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way over to the right. And then I'm just going to write the answer down below so I can keep that so you always have it. So tangent of 2 theta, we're going to use tangent of 2 theta, which is going to be 2 tangent of theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared of theta. OK. So I don't know why I'm using the same color. I should change that up. So tangent, remember now, is opposite over adjacent, right? So I have 2 times a negative 15 over 8. I use negative 8 in all these, right? OK, yeah, good. Divided by 1 minus negative 15 over 8 squared. So as I keep on working with that, uh, I can multiply across here, which is going to give me a negative 30 over 8. Divided by, um, I can square that. So it's going to be 1 minus 225 divided by 64. Then again, to subtract that, you're going to want to rewrite that as a, um, as a fraction with the denominator of 64. I can reduce negative 30 over 8. Um, let's see, I can divide in a 2. So that'd be 15 over 4. So it's going to be negative 15 over 4 divided by 64 over 64 minus 225 over 64. 64 minus 225, we've already taught, we've already shown, is a negative 161. Uh, so that's a negative 161 over 64 divided by a negative 15 over 4. Then the last thing we want to do now is multiply by its reciprocal. So by multiplying by the reciprocal, I do 64 over our negative 64 over 161. Let's make that negative. And then 64 over 161. Now 4 is going to, no, 4 does not go into there at all. 4 does not go into 60. No, yeah, it does. Um, let's see, that would be 24. That would be 10. So that would be 40, 24. So that would be 16. OK. So then this gets reduced to 16. Oh, my. Not fun. Maybe I should just do one of these problems. Huh? How does that sound? I think that's a good idea, Mr. McLogan. So I'm just going to do this one problem. I'll do these other two on um, other examples. Um, I'll do them on other videos. So therefore, uh, 64 divided by 4, just double check my work. Yep, very good. So then I do negative 15 times uh, 16, negative 240, divided by negative 161. And that is perfect. So therefore, that multiplies to give me, uh, that gives me a negative 240. That cancels out to give me a positive uh, 1, or they cancel out to 1. Or the negative and the negative, those are going to divide out. So I'm left with a positive 240 divided by 161. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use, uh, that is how you evaluate for the double angle of sine, cosine, and tangent when given an equation and a constraint for theta. Thanks. <laughs> yeah.